today um, we are very pleased to host um, Heike Demoyen. Um, Dr. Demoyen is here for a good um, occasion, and the occasion is publication and presentation of his uh, book, uh, which is um, right here. And it's called uh, Armenian Legacy in America, a 400-year heritage. So Dr. Ike Demoyan is a graduate of the Yerevan State University. Uh, he graduated in 1998. He received his degree of candidate of historical sciences uh, back in 2002. Ten years, of, uh, ten years after it, in 2012, he received his um, Doctor of Historical Sciences from the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, from 2006 uh, to 2017, until uh, two years uh, ago. So he was a director of the Armenian Genocide Museum and the, uh, and the Institute here in Yerevan. Uh, from 2011 to 2015, Haidt um, was the secretary of the State Commission on Coordination of the events dedicated to the commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. In 2017 and 18, Dr. Demoyan was U.S. Fulbright Visiting Scholar at the Davis Center for Russian and Eurasian Studies at Harvard University. Currently, he serves as a Chief Operational Officer of the Aurora International Humanitarian Initiative. Dr. Demoyan is author of 12 books, including the Armenian Genocide, front page uh, coverage in the world media in 2000, uh, published in 2014. He, in 2013, he published Foreign Policy of Turkey and the Karabakh Conflict in Russian. Um, in 2009, he published uh, Armenians, The Armenian Sport and the Gymnastics in the Ottoman Empire in 2009 in Armenian. In 2008, in English, he published uh, the Western media coverage of the Nagorno-Karabakh Conflict in 1988 to 1990. He's also uh, authored some 40 academic articles. So here uh, we have a good occasion, like I said. Uh, so Dr. Demain is presenting his uh, newly published book, which uh, was published um, last year. And um, we are very pleased that this is a second um, presentation that Dr. Demain is having in Armenia. And we are very pleased that AWA is uh, hosting um, this book presentation. Uh, so, as always, our format is, follow, is as follows. The, the man will be talking some 30-40 uh, minutes, uh, and then uh, it will be followed by Q&A session. Uh, so, I need to also add that uh, Dr. Man is a good friend of mine. I have known him since 1992. Uh, uh, we are both from Gilri, and uh, we have been in touch with, uh, with each other since then. So, I can. Please, the Thank you, Laura. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank for this uh, great occasion uh, uh, to present the book, actually, to be uh, accurate. This is the second, but the first in its kind, because this is the classical format of the presentation and the AUA is the first place for classical presentation because the first one was more business oriented for business people. It was a private presentation, not a classical one. I uh, made uh, during uh, my book tour in the, in the US cities. Uh, <coughs> also, there's a difficulty uh, to, start, uh, 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 to start the presentation with the question uh, how the idea come, uh, came to me to write uh, such a book. Of course, behind of, uh, all books, there is an idea. One day, in a day or morning, or the, or the night time, an idea came to write a book. But this is just an idea, and the harsh word is just in front of you. You have to dig out a lot of materials, go to archives, ask uh, people. But uh, for this book and a couple of other my books, there is also one mandatory um, uh, mandatory uh, condition, precondition. You have to be lucky a little bit to write such uh, books. Uh, I will explain what it does mean to be lucky while writing such kind of books. Uh, uh, book writing, in my opinion, is not a sport, but it's also art. Uh, sport is not a good thing, although uh, 
I wrote a book about arena sport history. Again, the, the term being likely also plays here uh, and has a central uh, place. Uh, what does it mean to be like? Well, uh, you are an academician, of course, you have to be academic, accurate, you have to dig up, you have to have patient, you have to go exact places uh, to find materials uh, you need in order to make a final result. But uh, when you write illustrated books, you have to be lucky to find materials. But this is one level of being lucky. The second one, uh, you have to find originals. And the third one, you have to be very, very lucky to have that originals in a place you never know before or to buy on auctions. So a uh, huge investment uh, was made in, term of, in terms of time, in terms of buying items to make this book. And the general secret, uh, oh my, my colleagues, <laughs> let them join us. The 30% of the content of this book was absolutely unknown for me, which means the 30% of materials I did uh, buy on the way uh, during the writing of this book. So it means that if something, some item uh, were not listed on eBay or other auctions, I couldn't use it after buying and putting the original photo or scan, scan copy of the document or the photo. So this made, uh, uh, this made uh, it's very precious uh, for me uh, uh, as a scientist, as an academician, to write a book. The book which is something like a whole big uh, forest you go in and sometimes you uh, lose yourself in this uh, area. But uh, finally you have uh, 640 pages with about 2,000 illustrations. And the bar is too high. You have to get originals. No Xerox copies, no copies of copies. We have to have exact artifacts, exact documents, exact original uh, photos to insert in the book to have high quality book. Uh, how the idea came, what the origin of this book? Uh, during the centennial, I heavily was involved in an extensive buying of old memorabilia and uh, materials, items, documents, uh, stamps, flyers, related to American Mary's Relief. It's a huge industry of humanitarian inter uh, intervention on behalf of Armenians and non-Armenian uh, victims of the genocide who survived. You know, the orphans, more than 100,000 survivors, uh, they survived because of this involvement uh, of American society, from president to ordinary Americans. Uh, they were involved in a world largest and unprecedented humanitarian intervention. So this was the big book idea. Then, as an historian, who all historians has magic of numbers and the dates, and then realized that uh, 2018 it's right 400 anniversary when the, for the first time the Armenian name was mentioned in the historical documents, uh, more uh, correctly in the documents of uh, London Virginia Company, and the current documents mention about uh, Armenian. Martin the Armenian or Martin the Persian. And uh, supposedly Martin the Armenian or Persian, he was a Juga Armenian merchant. Uh, he was a merchant who for a while stopped at London and he came uh, with the governor of uh, Virginia. You know, Virginia was part of the uh, colony, uh, British colony, and he was a servant. And uh, the first story, the beginning of uh, American Armenian uh, presents on American soil starts, at least this is the most uh, uh, the ancient document uh, we have. You, you see the original handwritten text from the London Virginia Company court documents and in one of them Martin the Armenian or Martin the Persian uh, is mentioned. You see Governor Yardley and the coat of arms of a company, London Virginia Company. Uh, next stories of Armenian presents are really fascinating. Uh, there are two Armenians who came to develop industry of silk growing. 
And uh, one more Armenian uh, story is really amazing because this is really Armenian, real Armenian story. Imagine uh, back in 1768, 1768, Armenian whose name was Johann Johann uh, Tabian started his trip from Singapore heading to Amsterdam. You know geography, how it will happen. So Indian Ocean, Africa, Southern Point, and then North, straight to uh, Europe. He had a cargo. The question, what kind of cargo Armenian from Singapore could take to Amsterdam, taking the 21st century realities? Hashish. Spice. No, no, Hashish. <laughs> so it was Amsterdam. So Armenians knew before that. Where he, uh, he had a big cargo of Hashish uh, heading to Amsterdam. And a lot of, it was a merchant ship, uh, a lot of European merchants with families, kids, wives, etc. On the second day, a huge ocean storm wrecked and destroyed all, all the boat, this merchant boat. And it was a uh, danger that the uh, uh, boat with the cargo and people would go down the ocean. And uh, the captain ordered all cargo to throw away to make the light, uh, the, the wrecked ship. But merchants, you know, if they are on the way, he collected a lot of stuff. And what uh, the time of uh, Babidian came, and he said, listen, if you kick out this captain, this Dutch captain, I promise I will take you to the, uh, to the land, and because I know uh, how to sail to uh, looking, uh, gazing to the stars, because my father uh, taught me how to do that. Probably he was a merchant and traveled with father. So the only chance. Of course, merchants kicked out this captain, and the story was printed later on. I will explain how. And one of the everyone started to shout, land, land, land. But imagine it was not Africa. It was California shore. So uh, the natural stream or ocean, uh, Pacific Ocean, uh, took them to California. And uh, look at the date, 1768. Last year, it was a 215th anniversary which, when the first Armenian appeared on the west coast. <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, they missed to celebrate. But it was a really amazing story documented. This is really uh, important. 50% of cargo all the merchants had on board, they gave as a token of gratitude. And even there's a really uh, amazing uh, touch story when all kids on the board, mothers put off uh, under the foot of uh, Armenian merchants to save their lives. And uh, in occasion, or on occasion of uh, this miracle survivor, Babidian ordered a book. He said, find me please uh, one of interesting and modern book on American history. I want to order translation into Armenian. Of course, who can translate Mahitaris? Uh, part of Mahitaris from Venice, they moved towards Vienna, but before uh, they uh, uh, stationed and opened a uh, new uh, abbey, they stayed in Trieste. Uh, Trieste, it's uh, in Italy. 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 And they translated uh, for a while in book, We Pass on Luzuna America, this is the history of America, of uh, Scottish author. And on the first, uh, in the first volume, you have two pictures. Johann Babica, of course, and the second person in occasion of Armenian finding of America is Christopher Columbus. So he represents himself as an Armenian Christopher Columbus <laughs> who opened uh, America. And this is really a documented story. It's not a miracle, it's not a tale story. Uh, of course, I'm not going to present you all 640 pages in every division or every story, but uh, I selected out and I singled out most, the most important, uh, the first one, series of the first, the first, etc. Uh, the question, when Washington, George Washington, was mentioned in Armenian sources, when it happened? And it happened in a book called Gish Anwanyal Borogait Aras. What is water guide for us? This is kind of pre-model of future Armenian constitution for future state. 
and it was very modern for that time. It was printed in 1773 by Shami Shami, and again, monk merchants uh, from Iran. Yes, they stationed in Madras. And this constitution, which was a couple of years before American constitution was uh, uh, written, there's an interesting passage, uh, a court, Orgai Parats translated like that, the snares of glory. The court says, uh, quote, at present we hear of uh, rumbling in America. A wise man by the name of Washington, born in America of English descent, having militantly rallied the people, is trying to win freedom and became independent. Although the outcome of that struggle still hangs in the balance. The basic aspiration of the American people is only natural to men because there is nothing sweeter about the saying of a man than the word freedom. So this was not uh, the, uh, the result of American Revolution, still was not clear, but Armenian uh, source, and the what kind of source, the in constitution, future constitution with people from, uh, Armenians from Iran, they uh, wrote uh, imagining future Armenian uh, statehood. And here we have George Washington, which is, of course, in Armenian sources, uh, sometimes mentions, like, mentioned like Georg Washington. Georg Washington, yeah. <laughs> this, this, uh, you say Armenians, but the Armenians from Iran. There are Armenians from New Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah, there are uh, not other parts of Iran. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Armenians from New Jerusalem specifically. Actually, Armenians from Arad Valley who were deported to New Jerusalem yes. and then they moved to, <laughs> yes. to be uh, accurate. Yeah, from this area. <laughs> Maybe second generation. Uh, Armenian uh, connection with uh, newly formed United States. Uh, there, uh, some, uh, there are some discussion even on Facebook that some Armenians were in George Washington's army or George Washington himself was Armenian, but of course, forget about it. Uh, first, Armenian language books were translated by non-Armenians, American missionaries who came uh, to Ottoman Empire in the uh, first half of 19th century. Uh, the target area was, of course, uh, Turks, uh, conversion of uh, Muslims, but then they switched to the local Christian communities. And American uh, Armenian uh, Protestant church appeared. Books to spread uh, modern Armenian language, uh, New Testament, uh, holy texts, were printed in New York by Bible uh, uh, Society. And you see a couple of them. Unfortunately, I missed the one with the uh, picture. Hopefully, uh, one day it also will be listed on eBay. I used uh, from Har Harvard Library uh, a copy for the book. It says, uh, Kurmanji. This is a book, a holy book, for Kurdish-speaking Armenians. Kurmanji is a Kurdish. So, uh, how detailed was the target uh, audience, you can imagine. There were a lot of Armenians uh, in Western Armenia who became Turkic speakers or Kurdish speakers. So this was printed in 1868 uh, in, uh, as you see, in North York, which is New York. <laughs> it's also uh, translated uh, of the word new. The first uh, Holy Testament in Armenian, in modern Armenian, not in Karabar, uh, was printed in 1858, one of the rare books of course, for modern day collections. One of the interesting uh, aspects of Armenian involvement in the US was a carpet business. They were carpet importers, then they established carpet business, started to make uh, uh, shops, showrooms, and uh, of course, factories. Uh, one of the two who uh, launched a real factory, not importing from Iran, or Turkey, or from Ottoman Empire, was Karagozian brothers, uh, who stationed in New York and Chicago. Uh, it's interesting that all rug sellers, in, on their letterheads, they always had symbols. Either Persia, lion, or Ottoman uh, cycle, uh, uh, crescent. Uh, because they had a connection, a business connection with Ottoman Empire, they used the state symbols of that countries. And uh, I would like to use the occasion and show you amazing uh, excavated item, as I promised. This metal uh, uh, black 
was excavated, really was excavated. It is not in the book because I found, I bought uh, this uh, shortly after the book was printed. Uh, this is Karagoyan Brothers uh, factory. It was on the wall of uh, factory of Karagoyan Brothers. Imagine on the Fifth Avenue, on the Fifth Avenue in New York. And it was not found in New York, but in Washington during the digging wars. So tractor while digging hit the metal. You can see the trace of destruction, and it just uh, oh, I'll show up and. Uh, Tractor driver decided that it's a good art or probably his cousin can put on eBay to make some money. Yes, he gets made some money from my pocket, and now I have this uh, in my hand. So, this is really amazing uh, stuff from the Fifth Avenue. But you said it was found in Washington? Yeah, during the uh, uh, digging blocks in Washington. I don't know how it appeared. Maybe it was trashed, and then that's why it appeared somewhere in a. Uh, 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 in a dust, in, in a mud of uh, Washington. Area. How do we know that it was on the Fifth Avenue? Because still, if you go Fifth Avenue, you will find Karagozian place. The old, old uh, uh, advertisement uh, uh, banners and the paintings you can uh, still find on old buildings in New York. It's there. It's a, it was a big showroom and factory of the brothers. They were very rich. Enough. Uh, amazing photo from Rhode Island. You see Armenian posing in very orientalistic uh, dress. It's leaving a carpet. It's a studio photo. Uh, here on the bottom you will see uh, his name with abbreviation and the date, uh, 1897. There are amazing collection of Armenian rock sellers catalogs and the flyers, they, they advertise their business. And I was really lucky enough while checking all different spelling of Armenian names. So one Armenian name, I used four or five different spelling and bingo, you hit the real item and you buy it. Sometimes probably four years, American put it on, uh, on eBay without mentioning Armenian. The keyword Armenia is not there. That's why no one, no one uh, showed interest to buy. So uh, while using this technique, uh, buying techniques, it was also uh, it was possible to buy Chucham Brothers, uh, Karagusan Brothers, uh, and other uh, seven, eight uh, different uh, catalogs of different edition. And even you can see Kyolian uh, monthly. This is periodical on uh, rock selling. There are those. Kyolian is also. Uh, uh, known for his first English language Armenian cookbook, he uh, wrote that in and uh, published in 1930. Here is interesting example. You have uh, Jereyan Brothers. Uh, photo is not mine. It's from uh, Project Save Archives. Jereyan Brothers from Iran. And uh, on a disc, uh, on a car, you can see Iranian lion with a sword, a symbol of the country. Uh, they import uh, uh, rocks and uh, very old uh, cars. Uh, Armenians were car drug uh, sellers, also uh, drug cleaning was the main Armenian business. One of the main Armenian business was drug, uh, uh, drug uh, carpet cleaning or uh, uh, rock cleaning. And one of interesting uh, carpets made by Armenian uh, Malkhaisian with George Washington, it's a property of Armenian Rock Society from California. They kindly gave me a right to put in, in my book. Well, uh, this car is from my collection. You see two cars here. It's a modern, very expensive one, but this is the most expensive. This 1920s, 30s car, very fashionable for among the collectors uh, in America, non-Armenian. They collect very old-fashioned uh, cars and toys. But this one with the driver, the driver still is inside. Uh, five years ago, I bought from auction. It says Derelian Oriental Rock Cleaning Works. Uh, it's uh, from California, San Mateo. So it's one of the gems of my American Armenian collections. And the photo shows different rock cleaning cars of different periods. They all fashion Tajirian. Kavukchian, Sukikian, a different Armenian name. It was rock cleaning and rock business was one of the Armenian uh, business uh, involvement in the American business life. But not only uh, rocks, but also uh, 
early uh, shops. Fortunately, two uh, historical places of Armenian big business uh, involvement is a Kazanjan company or Kazanjan store in Rhode Island, Newport. Uh, it's from last year. We visited with family in a Newport, and you can see Kazanjan. The exact building is still, still there. It's a souvenir shop. Uh, souvenirs from uh, Orient, uh, from Japan, from China, from Malaysia, Kazanjans, Kazanjas. Uh, 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 we're selling. Still, is possible to find with the Kazanjan seal uh, some uh, uh, collector items on eBay. The store is exactly the same; nothing changed. And one early Armenian business opened in Boston, right in the center. And the guy whose name is Hagop Porigian, my friend, uh, 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 wrote a book about his uh, experience. He came to U.S. without any dollar in his pocket. He was a servant of an American missionary. He came to U.S. In, back in 1860s, and then he appeared as a, uh, he turned into the first uh, American-Armenian millionaire. He was a rock merchant, importer, he was involved heavily uh, uh, in the business, but also relief activities on behalf of Armenians who suffered Armenian uh, massacres. The shop area, Hagop Borigian, uh, he was successful because of uh, uh, his uh, meeting with the Boston Society. Uh, he was very active uh, among the American elite of uh, that time. And the meeting, crucial meeting was with Longfellow. Longfellow was the first buyer of his only, only uh, rug, small rug he brought, uh, brought in. And then Longfellow started to advertise that there is a good uh, oriental rugs you can buy. All Bostonians uh, started to buy rugs from the Hagopolito. That's why he made uh, uh, money. Well, this is another amazing story. Another amazing story. Probably uh, many of you who visited Boston, you can remember on old city hall, Unihorn and Lion. Have you been in Boston? Of course you remember on old colonial building, there is a lion and a Unihorn, made of metal. Before that, 150 years ago, the originals were wooden. So wooden's were uh, destroyed within time period, and Armenian from Mar Marash, Bulesian, Moses Bulesian, who visited with money this time to establish business. He then started first in Egypt, but then he moved uh, to the United States and stationed in uh, uh, Boston. You will see in the photo with the future mayor of Boston, with Reddy Unihar and Lion. But uh, the photo was taken no one realized that there is a secret in the head of a lion. In the head of a lion, there was a time comes capsule inserted that time. And five years ago, during the uh, next round of renovations, this time American workers find a uh, time capsule inserted in the lion's head. When they opened, they found a lot of memorabilia, newspapers, documents, books, also about Armenian massacres in the uh, Ottoman Empire. You see Bulesian leatherhead. He was very well known. He wrote poems, uh, some uh, drama uh, scripts. He bought also theater. But the uh, uh, most important story related to uh, Gulesian, it's of course uh, U.S.'s constitution, which is now uh, in Boston Harbor. It's a special museum, a lovely place to take kids. Uh, when the USS Constitution was destroyed to destroy, making it as a target for artillery sharing, Gulesian, he offered money. I said, what are you doing? You destroyed the history. I'm going to buy it, to preserve it. And many uh, Bostonians and Americans raised their voices. Uh, it was a big save. But Americans first reject. See, there was a discussion even in Congress why this Armenian wants to buy uh, worship. <laughs> Although it was destroyed, it was age old, with old gas, very old, no one used that time. There was even gossip that Armenians want to make a fleet to, uh, <laughs> to move against the Ottoman Empire <laughs> for the duration. So this was uh, one of the uh, interesting things and accusations for a militaristic uh, spirit of Bulesian, but he saved the uh, Constitution. Now, if you visit Boston, you can uh, see it's very funny and uh, attractive place for kids too. But remember Gulesian, because la the last 
slide also connected with uh, Gulesia. Uh, one of the first poems praising America before green cards were invaded. Uh, this was a historian, uh, uh, very well known, uh, Alicia, Edward Alicia. His brother was in, in, in the United States and he described the United States as like a paradise. It's a place where people feel very comfortable. Everything is, you know, uh, it's like a paradise and everything is okay if you go there to establish your business, to establish your family. And the one Alicia who, you, you remember, he, he wrote a lot of folios, big books about Armenia, never visiting Armenia while sitting on Venice Island. He also wrote this poem, American Sacred Songs, praising, by, by words of his brother, praising American realities. Fortunately, I have this very rare book I found in one of Armenian bookshops laying on the floor. <laughs> so I was nearly walk, walking over it, and they found, wow, this is Alicia, this is what I need. Uh, no second copy, uh, even in the uh, national library. Uh, Where did you find the US? In Paris. In Paris. Uh, so uh, you will see here on the next uh, slide one of the early passports uh, for naturalized Armenian. Early passport looks like this, uh, 1880s. Uh, Armenians who looked like the Turks uh, because they dressing the top face was a uh, Turkish Oriental guy. Sometimes uh, they became targets for intolerant attitude, uh, especially in Massachusetts. It was the main area for concentration. How it happened? One of Armenian uh, Armenians found himself uh, in a via uh, factories in Massachusetts. Very hard place to work. Many became injured or they lost uh, their lives because it was very dangerous in the wire industry, metal works. But uh, then he wrote a letter to his uh, cousins. Whole villages started to move to America with one target destination, Worcester. Worcester is America. This was a funny story. Armenian arriving in New York, uh, in Ellis Island, the question of uh, uh, Today they call it Homeland Security. Uh, where are you going? I'm going to America. The answer was America, America. You are in America. Explanation. No, Worcester is America. So for Armenia, New York is not America. Washington is not America. Boston is not America. Until they reach and they see their cousins, their friends, their compatriots from the exact region or village from Western Armenia. So uh, this guy uh, called Joe the Turk, his real name is Karabet, who was a hero for Salvation Army. And you see the original face, which, which is still in the Museum of Salvation Army. They send me a lot of photos of memorabilia, they, they keep it. Uh, Joe the Turk, he was a really bully guy, uh, arrested several times, but he was a really naive uh, guy used for uh, public relations for the uh, Salvation Army at that time. And he's a trumpet with a Turkish like Oriental. Uh, costume. He was really an uh, extraordinary uh, uh, person uh, for Salvation Army. He joined for a lot of meetings. I have a couple of booklets uh, mentioning his name, Joda Turk or uh, uh, Karabet. Uh, Armenian uh, memorabilia from Ellis Island. You know, the uh, immigrants, all of nationals, they visited first. Uh, uh, Ellis Island for quarantine, stayed for a while there for checking uh, medical treatment if they have some diseases. And you see early uh, tickets uh, for boats and streams, they moved. One of amazing uh, documents with the Department of Commerce and Labor Immigration Service. This is Ellis Island, 1900s. Look at the text. I found this uh, from the collection of American Armenian uh, Museum, which is in Watertown, Massachusetts. While working there, I occasionally found this in one of the files. This is Armenian text on a letterhead of Ellis Island, but this is Turkish language, Armenian character, Turkish language. Tuka, Haya uh, text, Haya uh, Tartur Keren, this is the exact uh, name in academic circles. Of course, in this island, you can see here. Next slide, uh, early photos from Worcester. As I said, Worcester was the main concentration area for Armenians, wire factories. A lot of them get injured. Many stayed there, forgetting their families, the same story occurring in our days. Many returned back, few of them actually, and they became 
uh, victims of the genocide. Many returned again. So this was the Armenian uh, business. And you will see uh, newly arrived in uh, Turkish uh, costumes, taking the first photo, of, uh, probably to report relatives that everything is okay. Uh, first church, Supregish in Worcester, it was Armenian church, and the bishop uh, Sarajan visited first. There was a skirmishes between political parties, of course, with the church political parties, and Jack Dashback appeared there, and there was a lot of clashes in the church, a lot of uh, sad stories, of course, uh, in American Armenian. Uh, history, the, the most, the saddest uh, uh, story dates to 1933 when the Bishop Durian was knifed during the Christmas service and the community just split. Uh, early photos of Armenian Gan, actually, this is more like a theatrical but not the real voluntary. Uh, rifles are originals, of course, it's from Booster and Boston. It's a field a show to raise patriotic feeling. Look at the date, it's 1909. It's a date when Adana massacre started, the second wave of Armenian massacres. And Armenians in Worcester with the Armenian flag, it's a big Armenian flag, three color, different three color with the lion, an American flag, of course. Uh, this was a field show to raise patriotic feeling among American Armenians, very small community, but also to send to Yerikish to show that we are ready to commit. And you can see a lot of studio photos with gunmen, very polished and uh, blinking boots and uh, with swords, just showing their commitment. Uh, the same happened uh, uh, with uh, some Armenians who left during the 1990s war. Uh, even there were real Fidai groups in Moscow, <coughs> young girls just growing the uh, beards uh, and associating themselves with the Fedais, but they never visited. It's a kind of psychological compensation of being out of the stream of events. Now, uh, Americans in Armenia. <coughs> uh, maybe you know about the uh, very uh, well known uh, writing of Benjamin Franklin. Uh, it was like a small, teeny uh, almanac uh, book kind of business manual, how to save money, how to establish uh, business. Uh, it's about uh, Rich, Richard. Uh, the, the hero is Richard, he's an abstract person, but he tells the uh, people who want to evolve themselves in the business how to establish, how to uh, count money, how to save money. Armenian translation of this bestseller, because it was translated in many, many languages, uh, appeared in Tiflis. I have for, uh, unfortunately the second edition, but not the first one. And the second edition dates to 1879. So uh, one of early uh, works of Franklin was translated in Armenian activities. Here you see Armenian photos, early Armenian photos. Uh, six, at least six doctors uh, were in Lincoln's army during the Civil War in the 1860s. Uh, we have one casualty uh, recorded in records uh, during the Civil War. And the uh, guy with the uh, gun is from, he's from Rhode Island. Uh, this time Armenians joined to uh, Mexico War in 1898. This was one of the preconditions to uh, get American passports, actually. They went to uh, military service for uh, this purpose also. Armenian media. Uh, first Armenian uh, newspaper was printed in 1888 in Jersey City and uh, <coughs> then uh, many others followed. In the book you will find also handwritten newspapers because of lack of money and funding. They also made handwritten in New York, in Boston. Uh, mostly political parties uh, made these handwritten uh, newspapers for propaganda, for political uh, reasons. Then the Yefrat, uh, Hyrenic was one of the early uh, editions, 1909, still it's uh, printed, Hyrenic <coughs> building in Boston. Aspar is also among the earlier American Armenian uh, uh, newspapers. And you can see Harvard's. The, the names of these uh, newspapers are extremely aggressive because it's a political party organ. So Harvard's, Kaizak, or you know. <laughs> The natural phenomenon. The first year, 1910. Let's go next. Uh, the word Armenia on American map. We will ask how Armenia was uh, mentioned on American uh, map. 
uh, you see very rare cancellation stamp uh, in Wisconsin Armenia town. It's still there. They said Armenia is established. That's what it was called Armenia. And uh, in my collection, I have 1900s uh, dated uh, this cover uh, with a special cancellation. There was also a small Armenia area in uh, uh, Pennsylvania. So it's there. I have old map of 1860s also mentioning Armenia. Uh, another <coughs> business sphere, except carpet uh, and the rug business, was uh, uh, export, uh, importing uh, tobacco, Turkish tobacco mostly, to the uh, United States. You can see tobacco box over there, called very banal way, it's an Armenian box, original from 1890s, Armenian mixture. Berberians and Markarians were champions among the uh, tobacco uh, business in the United States. Uh, another sphere is uh, cookies, oriental cookies and sweets, delights, and you see a really uh, funny Armenian, and dear Haikagan, Hangistapada. Hangistapada is delight, uh, translated uh, into Armenian. Uh, this box is a part of a uh, collection of Nasser in uh, Boston, still I'm looking for the original to get for my collection. But imagine Armenian coat of arm. All newspapers, mostly books, production which was made by Armenians, even for uh, hairs for women to color on the, on the etiquettes, uh, on the labels, you have always Armenian flag, either Armenian flag or coat of arms. This was preparation for patriotic uh, kind of, uh, you know, SMS messages for be ready for Armenian state. Uh, like which year is this? This is uh, 1920s, early 1920s. Another interesting business, I found a story with my help uh, uh, from Boston, it is not in the book, Zulak. Zulak, it's kind of like modern town. Uh, Armenian uh, Dadrian, there's no connection with uh, Professor Dadrian. You can see bottle even made. Professor Dadrian here is mentioned in Zulak. He said that this uh, magic uh, drink helps you for digestion, for your health, and New York people, as in our days, started to buy Zula. And you can see the original uh, uh, postcard I have in my collection in one of New York streets. Zula, huge advertisement. Well, probably it's a kind of play of words with the Mazun, Zula, or uh, I don't know, Nari name <laughs> that time, I don't know. But the bottle I have still in my collection. A very successful business uh, 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 startup, let's say. He made a business startup, made a lot of money for a couple of years, and he's out of the business. Uh, Armenian labels of different uh, businesses, Californian, of course, vegetable fruits, and uh, one of the well known businesses, Columbia yogurt. It was sold uh, to Danone, uh, but until 1980s, all Armenians still bought Columbia business, uh, Columbia yogurt which was uh, for the Armenian business. Yeah, you saw this. A uh, couple <coughs> of uh, photos from the uh, genocide period. This installation, using modern term installation, of mother Armenia, two kids like orphans and Uncle Sam. It's in Seattle, Armenia starting. Uh, in Philadelphia, the mayor's uh, house, the city hall, and the court is the same building from different points. From the court part, you see justice. Uh, there was Armenia Day in 1917 with the black ban uh, banners and Armenia US. It was a day of solidarity with Armenian people. Uh, many Ar uh, American cities, on the level of uh, mayors, use this occasion for fundraising to help uh, Armenians. And we are close to finish to leave time for questions and answers. Uh, this was uh, really. Uh, uh, my eyes really literally were in tear, uh, tears when I uh, found this item in a corner behind of the safe, metal safe uh, in Boston. Uh, I opened it, it was a framed, uh, made in Armenia, of course, in Western Armenia. I look at three females, uh, made a, a frame, it was very fashionable that time, to uh, make a needlework as a natural frame and put the photo just in the middle our grand grandmothers uh, used that way of framing photos and the wording says 1910 me more uh, it's really uh, a touch message because many of men they left families abandoned they forgot because they found new realities 
the American life was very attractive, you know, everything is there, you can start to feel uh, secure there because there is no Kurdish assault or Turkish assault, taxation problem. But this is really bold message, even it resonates for uh, our days. And the last, uh, the last slide before I say thank you for your kind attention. Uh, a lot of things ahead. So, three medical stories uh, I have to dig out to find the uh, real roots and the proofs it, that it's really we have connection with uh, Armenians. It's a uh, uh, all Armenians, uh, even those who want uh, wants to say in Armenia but not to go in the U.S. They know about the green color of dollar that it was invasion of uh, Armenian. There are some Armenian sources, but there are no neutral sources to prove that. That's why I skipped that story for the second edition, or the third edition of the book, to be accurate. It's one of the early uh, colors. <coughs> the sources say that the American government bought the, uh, the patent of the green color Armenian uh, uh, scientists made uh, back in 19, uh, 1860s. Uh, the second story is related to the copper. To the copper used uh, for uh, Statue of Liberty. They say that copper uh, mined from the mining of Alaverdi because French people, French businessmen and artists, they used for uh, French, uh, French used to like making uh, Statue of Liberty. But uh, American sources mention Norwegian mines for, yeah, we have to find, you see, Norwegian and Armenian <laughs> copper connection in Statue of Liberty and other reasons. <laughs> yeah. And the third one, it's really a nice hint. It's a postcard I found in Gulesian papers. I asked you, remember Gulesian, who saved the, the USS Constitution and this uh, Unicorn and Lion? Uh, daughter, while before donating all the papers of fathers to Watertown Museum, look at this uh, Brooklyn Bridge and the writing at the bottom. It says, All from Papa. So, Brooklyn Bridge most probably has some Armenian connection because Bulesia had a huge uh, factory in, uh, in a uh, metal wire factory in uh, Boston. So, probably uh, his, uh, was, his production also was used or he had some order. Uh, from American government uh, for uh, Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn Bridge. And uh, yes, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, I guess it was a fascinating story, and, uh, and I'm sure there, there are more fascinating uh, stories in the book. So we have the copy of the book uh, in the library at P uh, American University, so you're more than welcome to have a look. Now, questions um, to Mike. Before the questions, uh, uh, another gem story I would like to show you. Of course, non music lovers or non lovers, they know about Zilja. Yeah. Zilji in Turkish means persons who make uh, uh, symbols. Symbol is Tanzabat. So here in my collection is Abedi Ziljan's Armenian signature, 1930s production. You know that this Ziljan is the, the earliest Armenian business still surviving. They had quarters in Massachusetts. It's from uh, 1623, if I'm not mistaken, 1623, yeah, more than 400 years, and they moved to U.S., but still there is a sign production of Turkey with uh, Ottoman scripts, they keep it uh, as a brand, but here you have Abedi Ziljan, the first who moved to U.S., his signature in Armenian Ziljan, original. Yeah, how about the cars? Well, cars is, uh, uh, my childhood, I was a car collector. I was there with every boy. I collected Soviet cars, but now the, the time for American cars, but with Armenian connection. With Mazmanian, we have Abajayan, different Armenian race drivers, and they do the business. It's a collector car. The collection for collection is heavy. I drove it very uh, Another one is there. Uh, I could bring more, but uh, for the next, next presentations. Okay, so now I think you can find in the book.
right, so questions, please. Um, if, if I can open the discussion. Um, to, uh, there was a car maker. I mean, his family is still alive in Boston, and uh, his name is Mira, which is Mirakia. Yeah, uh, car He's still dealers. Very, very, very rich car. They are car dealers, car. actually, not makers, dealers. I have a good friend, uh, Paul Meyer. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, I want to know how the book was received in the States and during your presentations uh, by Americans, by Armenians. Um, yes, um, that's a good question actually. Um, what are the strategies to write this book uh, behind? The idea behind is to write a book not for Armenians, but first of all for Americans. So this book is kind of American style to uh, burst interest of uh, Americans, historians, who are interested in American history, towards this episode, absolutely unknown episode of uh, Armenian uh, involvement of Armenian part of American history. It's modest, but it's worthy to tell, with many, many connections and the service, of course, uh, to American honor. Uh, I tried hard. Uh, to uh, bring the attention of the community towards this date, very important date, uh, 400 anniversaries, really worthy to commemorate, uh, to show that uh, on the East Coast 400 years ago, Armenia appeared on the West Coast in the same year, you can celebrate 215th anniversary. Um, I would say that to very really, uh, low interest. It surprised me, honestly. I was there for eight months. But of course, people excited how we made this. It's amazing. Many of them found their grandfathers. I don't know names that I will add. So they came with the books. And you see, you, you used the photo of my grandfather. is there. Uh, yeah, uh, people received this book with uh, real excitement. But it is also kind of a uh, phenomenon you have to study why uh, modern uh, diaspora, it's, it's a general, I don't want to accuse the diaspora of American or mean diaspora, it's general trend. People, they, they uh, intensively lose the interest toward the book, but it's not uh, necessarily means that they are interested to, uh, towards e-books. But people read very small texts now. Huge books, uh, two and a half kilo, probably is not interesting. They, they buy as a part of furniture, you know, just to have it. <laughs> but not to read it. This is sad reality. It's not Armenian probably, but it's also a world phenomenon. Uh, yeah, uh, many uh, Armenians still uh, want, and I'm really pleased to give to this book as a gift. And I would like uh, to mention also <coughs> the name of uh, Lubar Afeyan. Uh, Lubar Afeyan, um, a very good friend of mine, one of co-founders uh, of uh, Oral Humanitarian Initiative. After I showed while in Boston the draft of the book, he took it and said, I test with them, I will help you with the printing, and you will see here on the first page the logo of Aurora Humanitarian Initiative, and the book was printed by uh, uh, support of uh, Nubar and Anna Afea on behalf of Aurora Humanitarian Initiative because this, uh, the spirit and content of the book relates to the mission of Aurora. People, refugees, uh, and orphans, uh, this is a story of human beings and humanitarian story. That's why uh, there's a connection with the uh, Aurora Humanitarian Initiative and my uh, initial idea. Actually, after a couple of days, uh, it, it, it will be one year when it was first uh, presented on March 1st in New York, the 9-11 Memorial uh, Museum, and five copies especially were made and uh, uh, with a special covers ordered in Tigran uh, print house uh, for quarters and American guests. So, um, very mixed feeling uh, how it was received, uh, but uh, probably very soon we will supply all uh, American research libraries, uh, university libraries, with a copy as a gift. And I'm glad that our ambassador in the United States, uh, my friend Barja, after each meeting with the U.S. congressman, 
in a photo occasion, you see this book, Congressman holding it as, yeah. Okay, other questions? I would like to ask if you uh, said that the interest towards reading has ceased in uh, Armenian society, Indian society uh, as a whole. But uh, how would you uh, assess the, um, uh, the involvement of youth in the Armenian, uh, Armenian life in uh, interest towards their roots? In uh, involvement in their uh, tradition, I mean, uh, in, in their attitude toward uh, Armenia and them being Armenians. Thank okay. you. This is this is really an interesting, at the same time very provocative uh, question, but I cannot escape from the answer uh, because the accuracy is a one important identity of all scholars. You cannot hide. You have to be lost. Uh, speaking loudly about a problem. And problem is very interesting. If you are a cultural anthropologist, you can see many, many details and follow very interesting uh, phenomena and episodes of diaspora community life. And here I revealed with this book as a key one, two different and mixed levels of American Armenian community. This also gave me a chance to penetrate in that levels, which is not visible. Old or say the say classical community which started from 19th century, early pre-genocide period where Venus arrived, and they fully Americanized, of course, very few words they can pronounce in in in, uh, in English, they were excited because they found themselves. So they are in a stream of American history. They are in the context of American history with this book. But later arrivals, especially after the Lebanese Civil War from the Middle East, from Istanbul, no interest towards the and uh, sometimes you I followed I witnessed clashes between them. So it was a really interesting phenomenon how uh, there are different attitudes towards their history in the context of American history. Uh, all the deeper and the new one, ground level still. As for youth, uh, you know, in many communities, uh, our youth unfortunately are politicized. Uh, maybe this is good for keeping our meaningless, uh, but for integrity, it's not good, in my opinion. Maybe I'm very straightforward in my judgments, uh, but yes, uh, sometimes we attach attached to the political parties. It's good for keeping Armenian identity. You read, uh, you learn uh, Armenian in the schools, which is also part of political parties. You read newspapers or uh, some Armenian signs uh, in Armenia. In some way, you keep that, but you are kind of isolated with the mainstream. No? People still in Boston they hear Zaharut, <laughs> so uh, or Armenian from Armenia. You know, this is the level uh, you can follow. Yes, please. Thank you, Demartia. Thank you very much for your great work. Uh, thank you for a nice uh, presentation. Uh, it's interesting to know about the response to the book in Armenia and in the USA, if it has been published. Well, um, one, um, I don't want to name a uh, guy because he's a friend of mine, but before. <laughs> Uh, I was surprised when he uh, said in one occasion that in Armenian, intuitively, intuitively, it's also interesting. You, you cannot be offended because you are a scholar and you have to put this in the context. Why he's saying an intellectual guy, uh, not a very well known scientist, but it's not a simple banal envy accusation. I'm not doing anything harmful, but I went in in the domain. It's an interesting phenomenon. Uh, if you put in the context of Hayastans in the diaspora, it's very interesting to follow. I, being Hayastans, a scholar, I live in America, I wrote American history fully from the very beginning to modern days. 
Well, we can both also in the context of that out, uh, envy or something, competition, which also a part. But uh, it's also interesting slides how we react, how we trust each other. This is the phenomenon. Uh, still, we have huge potential of being uh, trustful towards each other. But uh, uh, this uh, book was not to uh, was made not to make not division lines, but rather to bring it together. That's why the idea behind to print it in Armenia to show that in Armenia also they print good quality books about American Armenian history was one of the small tricks behind. There was chance of course printing in China as everyone do, but uh, printed in Armenia was for me very important. Yeah. Not teasing, <laughs> uh, but uh, to show that we can do something together because uh, we, are, we have one body and one soul. Our eyes can be different colors, our hairs can be different colors, we are diverse, but the important thing is body and soul is very important to be one. I would assume there must be other publications by American Armenians, maybe, or Americans uh, on this topic. Uh, have you oh, yeah. seen, like... Uh, Malcolm's book printed in uh, 1920s, uh, American Armenians, is one of the early uh, books. Actually, in this book, first, uh, the story of uh, Martin the Armenian was uh, printed. So we uh, started uh, from that period to know about the first Armenian traces in, uh, in America. There were many other editions, mostly it's uh, sociological, historical books. Uh, my book, uh, I don't want to say it's exclusive, of course it's a part in the chain, but this is the first attempt uh, for concise illustrated history uh, with rare and known pictorials, visualizing community history. So this is the first attempt to make. Uh, it's not fully academic, of course. There are texts, uh, there are quotes, but it's based on uh, visual materials mostly. Well, others did not have that kind of. No, very small uh, pictures or uh, reproductions they use. But here you have to pick out huge amount of materials from archives, libraries, Armenian private collections buying and making huge collection, I don't know all the way to buy it, uh, a lot of paintings even I found, uh, which is there, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, and it's also huge time, uh, time and money waste, but uh, you have a uh, rare collection. And the archives were mainly in US or Paris or so? Uh, that you literally uh, archive here, but I mean a state archives also from the little basic team, uh, archives of Nasser, uh, archives of uh, Armenian institutions in Massachusetts and California. Well, uh, some uh, Library of Congress, of course, I visited because recently an Armenian uh, family of a very prominent Armenian uh, photographer, they gave 6,000 photos to Library of Congress. So it was only uh, one occasion to go there and check all these uh, uh, photos there. Uh, of course, church uh, archives, it's important, but uh, it's really another sad story, how the heritage is kept. It's a random search, a random occasional finding. They were likely you can find in one of the corners, forgotten 40, 50 years. Yeah, huge uh, photo collections or rare books. And no one cares, there is no systematized, systematized archive and library. The library is in good condition because all libraries in Armenia, no one read Armenia. What you can do if you are lucky, uh, I was a very um, silver man in this term, I confiscated the books, really confiscated. I asked the key when it was last time opened these uh, shelves. Uh, Mr. Delman, tell me maybe 35 years ago. Do you have a key? Well, it take a couple of hours and even a couple of days to find the key. I returned back in the same spot with the same and you found the key. And I opened I said, so you don't need those books? I will take it for Armenia. And uh, I believe that 50, uh, 50 um, books not included in a catalog of high book, you know, National Library is printing high book catalogs. 50 books I donated are missing. So they had no idea that Armenian language books existed, printed, the unit. 
So it was a big collecting activity uh, for many, many um, institutions, of course, for, first of all, for the Genocide Museum, uh, a lot of uh, glass lanterns, a lot of photo archives. People don't know what to do. The worst thing, they trash it. And you hear there are a lot of stories how they trash all archives. All photos, oh, you told, you told it was interesting or important? This is a banal answer to your reaction. How you could trash it? Uh, I was in Boston. American brought uh, panoramic photos of American Armenian community of 1900s. He took it from garbage bin and realized it is Armenian. And he, he realized it's important to take to Armenian Museum rather than trash it. American, not Armenian, American Armenian. Someone from the family just trash it. Okay, other questions? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Congratulations. I, of course, I'm excited to read your book. Uh, I think that there was only time on Malcolm's side to have something uh, covering the entire spectrum, you know, period of time that there was the American so proud. This is the second attempt, and I hope it's, it's richer and broader. And it plans to uh, include North America, which is Canada as well, uh, maybe as a separate edition, or maybe as an inclusion into broader America's aspect. Because we know that there's also a very interesting history north of the border. Yeah, it's a, it's a part actually of the American continent. Uh, but uh, I decided to focus on American uh, Armenian history. and. Uh, Mexican Armenians claim that the first Armenian came to Mexico. Uh, probably it was the first conquistador Armenian. I don't know. Uh, who visited with uh, conquistadors. This <laughs> uh, much earlier. We have to check. Yeah, we have to check this. Um, uh, Canada is also interesting. There are some uh, pretty good uh, studies on uh, Canadian American uh, uh, history. And a cover photo one of the important cover photos. It's uh, American Armenian veterans of the First World War who, with the Uzuna, American traditional music instrument, walked towards Washington from different states. They were uh, nearly 1500s uh, with the Armenian surgical doctor. Uh, and they tried to uh, pass, it was 1920, April 18, as a memorandum to the US government to recognize officially First Armenian Republic, 1920, April uh, 18. And they had this uh, big panoramic photo of all the veterans seated on US Congress building uh, uh, stairs, really powerful photo, everything is here. Service, people who believed and went to, for, uh, to fight in American uniform with American flags, and it's a kind of panoramic hope for the hope for honor.